This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer, Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is a Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. The original version of this Tamil video was published as a YouTube live video by Aditya Guruji on the occasion of the festival of Pongal. In my last video, I had explained about the sign of Virgo, the favorable dashas for the native of Virgo ascendant and the best professions that the native of Virgo ascendant can choose. In this video, I am going to explain about the effects of the planets in the sign of Libra and much more intricacies of astrology. In my premium videos, I have explained the effects of planets in the first house, second house, etc. up to 12 houses. There was a huge reception for those videos and few of my subscribers asked or requested why don't I post such videos on YouTube for all my subscribers. In other words, they requested me not to charge any fees for the videos and to publish the videos on YouTube free of cost. Some had even commented that I have become money minded and I am so much keen to earn money etc. I hope that the number of videos and the content of the videos that I published on YouTube publicly so far speaks whether I am money minded or not. I have explained a lot of intricacies on many YouTube videos and of course I have written more detailed articles as well. Well, I then decided to publish certain videos on the request of my subscribers. Therefore, I started publishing and explaining about the effects of the planets in every house right from the house of Aries. And I really see a huge reception for these videos at my subscribers end. And I am very glad to see that many of my subscribers understand and perceive the intricacies of astrology explained in my videos. I really appreciate your efforts to learn astrology. So far I have explained the effects of the planets right from Aries to Virgo and the favorable dashas for the native of all these ascendants. Now let me explain about the effects of the planets in the house of Libra. I believe you all know that before explaining the effects of a planet in a house, I always explain the nature of the house, the characteristics and then I start to explain the effects of the planets in that particular house. I usually explain which planet will deliver benefits and which planet will do worse effects etc. Well, now let me explain about the house of Libra first of all. The house of Libra is a mobile sign. I believe you know that the houses are classified as Chara Rashi, Stira Rashi and Upaya Rashi, that is mobile sign, fixed sign and dual signs. Among these categories of houses, the house of Libra is classified as Chara Rashi, that is mobile sign. This is the third mobile sign. This is the other side of the lower sky in the west horizon of the natural zodiac. If we take Aries as Lagna and from Aries to Virgo, it will be above Earth on sky and starting from Libra, it will be straight opposite to Aries on the bottom side. There are totally 12 houses in the natural zodiac. We can divide the natural zodiac as two divisions right from the first house to the sixth house which is from the house of Aries to the house of Virgo and the second division from the house of Libra to the house of Pisces. Therefore, 
this house represents the horizon of the natural zodiac as i already explained this is the other side of the lower sky in the west horizon of the natural zodiac if we take aries as lagna the libra house is a chara rashi that is mobile sign this is an airy sign especially the air that libra represents is the air that rapidly spreads this house represents elegancy because the house lord of libra is venus there are totally 9 padas in every house and in the house of libra there are stars like chitra swati and visaka the third pada of chitra the fourth pada of chitra the first pada of swati second pada of swati third pada of swati and fourth pada of swati and the first pada second pada third pada of visaga or in the house of libra this is one of the significant houses among the movable signs saturn gets exalted in the house of libra the aries represents the east and the sun that represents the east gets exalted in the house of aries and the house of libra that represents the other side of the horizon the west direction is where the saturn that represents the west gets exalted let me repeat the sun that represents the east gets exalted in the house of aries and the saturn that represents the west gets exalted in the house of libra that represents the other side of the horizon i repeat the house of libra is the chara rashi that is mobile sign airy sign there are three stars in the house of libra chitra swati and vishaka the pictorial representation of the house of libra is the weighing balance you can have many interpretations of the pictorial representation of the house of libra in general those natives who are born as libra ascendant or libra rashi will be good business people those who are born as native of libra ascendant or libra rashi will know how to make profit they know the strategies of when to sell the product and where to sell the product to gain profits the billionaires of the world the richest people of the world would be mostly the natives of libra ascendant if the house of libra is good then the native of libra ascendant or libra rashi will be very successful in the business definitely the house of libra should be strong for this this is the mool trigon house of the venus the own house of venus is rishabh that is taurus and the mool trigon house of the venus is libra that is tula the natural benefits attain the status of mool trigon in the houses in the lower half of the natural zodiac and the natural malefics will attain the mool trigon status in the houses of the upper half of the natural zodiac i have already repeated these points in my youtube videos the house of libra represents love the house of libra is the masculine house of venus a movable sign that is chara rashi and airy sign therefore in order to make predictions you have to combine all the characteristics of the house the venus represents the opposite gender for you for a male it represents female gender and for a female it represents male gender the house of venus represents the lover the husband or the wife this house is meant for carnal pleasures the house of libra should not be affected though any other house gets affected this house represents the lower abdomen of the human body the entire lower abdomen abdominal part below the navel the lower back that is the lumbar region 
or represented by the Libra house. This is the seventh house of the natural zodiac. This house represents the kidney and please remember Venus is the significator of kidney. The area around the kidney, the area above the butt and around the butt of the human body are represented by the house of Virgo. This is the seventh house of the natural zodiac. In order to make complete predictions, you have to know everything about the house. You have to know the house effects, you have to know the significance, the Pabatua house effects, the Subatua house effects, etc. Before making predictions, you have to know whether the house is Chararashi, Sirarashi, or Upayarashi, that is, whether it is mobile sign, fixed sign, or dual sign, whether it is masculine sign or feminine sign, which Panjabodha Tattva the house represents, etc. Then comes the pictorial representation of the house, which also gives a lot of ideas about the house. Well, the pictorial representation of Libra is a balance. The plates on two sides of the balance are equal. So, when the house of Libra is Subhatva, then the native of Libra ascendant or Libra Rashi will be impartial or unbiased. Nobody can buy the native of Libra ascendant or Libra Rashi. The natives of Libra ascendants know all the strategies to sell a product at a great price because this house indicates a good businessman because the balance represents the business here in olden days the businessmen used the weighing balance for their business therefore the house indicates business and good business people the house represents ethics and also no sentiments the native who was born as Libra ascendant will be very ethical and if someone does wrong, then they will be unbiased towards them. The native of Libra ascendant or Rashi will not have any sentiments at all. They does not mind who makes a mistake, whether it is their mother or brother or even their own child, they will be totally unbiased. The native of Libra ascendant is an unbiased jury. The Libra house will reflect the entire characteristic of the Venus. You will find the elegance of a female in this house. They does not wear clothes without ironing. The artistic nature of the Venus will be reflected in the native of Libra ascendant. If the native of Libra ascendant possess all the characteristics of the Venus that is house lord, then the house lord should have been Subhatva. If you want to know the Pabatva and Subhatva house effects of a house, you have to check the status of the house lord. In general, the malefic planet should not reside in Sagittarius, Pisces, Libra and Taurus, that is in Danush, Mean, Tula and Rishabh. If the house of the Jupiter and Venus are spoiled, then the house effects and the significance will be spoiled. In a good natal chart, everything should be in place and perfect. If a person has to enjoy the pleasures in life, the Libra house should not be spoiled. This house represents the love and if you observe the people whose marriage is love marriage, then the house of Libra will be Subhatva and the native would have gone through the major planetary period or minor planetary period of Venus, that is Dasha or Antar Dasha of Venus. The house of Libra represents love because this is the seventh house in the natural zodiac. For a male, the Libra house represents the female gender and for female, this house represents the male gender. Based on the house of Libra and based on the Subhatva of the house of Libra, we can identify whether the person's love will be fulfilled or not. Therefore, this is a very important house in a person's life. This is the beginning of the second division of the natural zodiac. The first 180 degrees 
of the natural zodiac is from Aries to the house of Virgo and the next 180 degrees starts from the house of Libra in the natural zodiac and this begins with the mobile sign that is Shararashi. This is the third mobile sign and this is an Aries sign. I hope you all remember what I have told earlier about the Aries sign. If one has to study aeronautical engineering, then they must be related to Aries sign such as Kum, that is Aquarius house or Libra house. Well, now let us see the effects of each planet in the house of Libra. The very first planet that I am going to explain is the Sun. Before explaining the effects of the planets in the house of Libra, I would like to add one more point. The Ascendant Lord becomes the Lord of the 8th house as well for the native of Libra Ascendant. There is one similarity among the natives of Aries Ascendant, Taurus Ascendant, Libra Ascendant and Scorpio Ascendant. For these houses, the Ascendant Lord itself becomes the Lord of the 6th house or the 8th house. For example, for the native of Aries Ascendant, the Ascendant Lord becomes the Lord of the 8th house. For the native of Scorpio Ascendant, the Ascendant Lord itself becomes the Lord of the 6th house that is Aries. In the same fashion, for the native of Taurus Ascendant, the Venus becomes the Lord of the 6th house, that is Libra. And for the native of Libra Ascendant, the Ascendant Lord becomes the Lord of the 8th house, that is Taurus. Consequently, what would happen? The native of these Ascendants will miss the opportunity by themselves or they will dig their own grave that is they will be the reason for their sorrow in certain situations. They will spoil their own life in certain situations. Now let me start with the effect of the planet sun in the house of Libra. The sun gets debilitated in the house of Libra. There are lot of nuances in the debilitation. There are certain people whose son is debilitated but would work as a collector or an IAS officer. Because there are many features that decide the final prediction. The one who had son in his natal chart as the Nichabanga Raja Yoga was a great ruler and he was none other than the great Tamil king Raja Raja Choran. In order to make the predictions of debilitation, you have to consider Subhatva, Pabatva and Nichabanga status as well. Though the sun is in a debilitated status throughout the month of Aipasi, that is Ashwin, mid-October to mid-November, post the date of Aipasi 20, the sun crosses the deepest debilitation degree in the house of Libra. Post 20 degrees, the sun has crossed the debilitation status and those who were born post the 20 degrees in the house of Libra, the sun is not in a debilitated status. If you assume this as a debilitation, for example, when sun is in 22 degrees or 25 degrees in the house of Libra and you consider this as debilitation, you will not get the exact prediction. Astrology is the most intricate art as soon as you see the sun in the house of Libra, you should not assume that it is debilitated and the person will not get a government job or you should not assume the status of the father will not be good. If you make such predictions, a hasty one, without taking a closer look at the degree, your predictions will go wrong. An aspect of a single planet Jupiter can even change the whole situation. When sun resides in the house of Libra in a debilitation status, what would be the antidote? 
द परिवर्तन ऑफ जूपिटर एंड वीनस और द परिवर्तन ऑफ वीनस एंड सन और इफ द सन गेट्स इनडायरेक्टली द स्ट्रेंथ बाय नीचे बंगा स्टेटस विल बी एन एंटीडोट व्हेन द सन इज इन परिवर्तन विद द डिस्पोजिटर और व्हेन द जूपिटर एस्पेक्ट्स दीज प्लैनेट्स और इफ द फुल मून एस्पेक्ट्स द सन देन इट इज एन एंटीडोट फॉर द सन व्हिच इज इन द डेबिलिटेशन हाउस let us imagine during the month of ipasi that is ashwin bit october to mid november when the moon is full moon then definitely the sun is not weak therefore in any situation when sun is in the house of debilitation in the house of libra and if it resides more than 20 degrees then please don't predict that the sun is debilitated what would happen in case of the sun is debilitated when sun is debilitated it will spoil the status of the father it will spoil the government related matters the person will not be able to live in the native place then the authority of the native of libra ascendant will be spoiled the significance related to the sun is power authority electricity and these will be spoiled in a nutshell what would happen when the sun is debilitated the light energy will be spoiled because the sun is the predominant giver of the light the one who works in the electrical shop will have sun subhatwa in the natal chart the native of a libra ascendant whose sun is debilitated will not be able to lead an authoritative position the leadership quality will be spoiled when the sun is debilitated it even affects the self confidence because the sun is a significator of the self confidence if a man has to live a good life he definitely needs to have confidence and more importantly he must have self confidence the sun signifies the self confidence therefore when the sun is debilitated it will spoil the self confidence of a person the person will not have the chance to work in the government related sectors the native will not have a good father the native will not be able to enjoy or will not get the paternal properties it will spoil the native place of the person when the sun is weak it spoils self confidence because the sun is the significator of the self confidence the lagna karaga is the sun so when sun is spoiled the native would not be able to work in the government sector therefore when the sun attains niche banga status that is when venus also resides in the house of libra or when the sun gets niche banga raja yoga that is when sun is in conjunction with the exalted saturn in the house of libra then sun will gain strength in general when a debilitated planet is in conjunction with the exalted planet then the debilitated planet gets niche banga raja yoga status therefore the sun needs to be subhatwa that is when the sun is in conjunction with the exalted saturn in the house of libra the sun becomes extremely parvatwa the antidotes or the aspect of the jupiter or the sun should have combusted the venus and the sun must receive the aspect of the jupiter in the natal chart if the sun has combusted the venus and receives the aspect of the jupiter then the native will get benefits from the government the status of the father will be good and the significance of the son will be delivered to the native can be in conjunction with mars because mars is a friendly planet to the son of course mars signifies a rowdy character yet mars is friendly to son therefore the son will not be definitely beaten up by mars when the sun is in conjunction with saturn it definitely will lead the native to lose the self confidence so here the niche banga raj yoga of sun is not good 
If you apply my concepts of Pabatva and Subatva, you can definitely make 100% correct predictions. Therefore, in any situation, the exalted Saturn should not be in conjunction with the debilitated Sun. Well, in this case, if the Sun is in conjunction with Saturn in the house of Libra, then check the degrees of the conjunction that is distance between the planets whether it is 8 degrees or 13 degrees or 22 degrees. If the Sun and Saturn are within 8 degrees conjunction, then the Sun becomes extremely Pabatva. The native will not be able to enjoy any significance related to father. This will happen either during the major planetary period of the Saturn or the Sun, that is Dasha of the Saturn or the Sun. If the Sun and the Saturn are 13 degrees apart, then Saturn is about to spoil the Sun. If the Sun and Saturn are 22 degrees apart, then there is no conjunction at all. Therefore, the degrees of conjunction, that is the distance between the planets, such as 8, 13 and 22 degrees, plays a very important role, which I often insist as well. Therefore, when the Sun is in conjunction with Mars in the house of Libra, it is not bad. When there is Parivartan of Venus in Virgo and Mercury in Libra, there is an indirect Nichabanga as Venus gets Parivartan to its own house. When there is Parivartan of Sun and Venus, that is, when Venus and Sun mutually exchange their houses, that is when Venus is in Leo and Sun is in Libra, then the Sun gains strength. The Sun will get its own house status in this case. So the Sun will be in a debilitated status only for those who were born until IPC 20, that is Ashwin 20. I would suggest to my astrology aspirants to learn the deepest exaltation points and the deepest debilitation points. The next planet that I am going to explain is the moon. There is no inimical house for the planet moon in the natural zodiac and when moon is in the house of Libra, it is Subhatva. It is Venus who treats the moon as its enemy. The moon in turn does not treat any planet as its enemy because the moon is a motherly planet. Based on the concept that the children might show some enmity or to be impartial towards a mother, yet mother will never be impartial towards the children, the moon does not treat any planet as its enemy. On the contrary, few planets treat the moon as its enemy. Therefore, when the moon is in the house of Libra, it is good. It is also in the quadrant house from its own house, Cancer. If the native is Cancer Ascendant and when the moon is in the house of Libra, it is in the quadrant house from its own house, Cancer, and the moon will gain directional strength, that is Digbala. I often reiterate a point that in order to assess the strength of the moon, you have to check whether the moon is heading towards Amavasya or whether the moon is heading towards the full moon. In other words, you have to check whether the moon is waxing or waning. In addition to this, you have to check whether the moon has got any Subhatva by the connection of Jupiter or Venus. Therefore, you have to check all these one by one to assess the strength of the moon in the natal chart. I would like to share some information here. Akshaya Trithiya is an occasion where the sun gets exalted in the house of Aries and the moon gets exalted in the house of Taurus during the month of Chitrai, that is Chitra, mid-April to mid-May. The day when the two luminaries have great strength is Akshaya Trithiya. What is the significance of Akshaya Trithiya? Akshaya Trithiya is the day when the two luminaries, the sun and the moon, are exalted. Please think about the following point. 
while there is a day where the two luminaries have great strength there should be another day where both the luminaries does not have strength at all where there is a day when the luminaries have great light energy there will be a day where these luminaries lose their light energy one such occasion where both the luminaries have no light energy is during the month of aipasi that is ashwin during the occasion of diwali the sun is in libra and is debilitated and the moon in libra does not have light energy during amavasya well therefore during diwali aipasi amavasya that is ashwin amavasya both the luminary sun and moon does not have light energy during the month of kartike that is kartika the moon in libra will be heading towards amavasya and the sun will be in the house of scorpio where both the luminaries does not have light energy these are the two occasions where both the luminaries does not have strength or light energy i often reiterate a point that if you want to assess the strength of the moon you have to assess the light energy of the moon let us imagine two cases for the native of cancer ascendant during the month of kartikeya the moon will be in the house of libra heading towards amavasya when sun is in scorpio the second case is during the month of aipasi the moon is going away from amavasya while the sun is libra where the moon has actually no light energy loses the sthana bala for the native of cancer ascendant when the moon is in the house of libra it gets dig bala which is directional strength which is next to the strength of sthana bala therefore you have to predict the strength of the moon based on its light energy and there are lot of combinations as well having said all these when moon is alone in the house of libra it is subhatva that is the moon gets subhatva however you have to analyze whether it is heading towards amavasya or it has crossed amavasya or the moon has got digbala in brief all these steps are followed to assess the status of the moon if the moon receives the aspect of the jupiter then it is the antidote for everything if the moon resides in the house of libra and gets aspected by jupiter then the person would have got very good mother the significance related to the moon will be very good to the native and the native will have a very clear mind though the moon resides in the house of libra as amavasya note this point though the moon resides in the house of libra as amavasya yet gets aspected by jupiter it is good for amavasya yoga to occur the dark moon should have aspect of either jupiter or venus but both had to be in very good strength the moon resides as amavasya moon in the house of libra it must remain subhatva with the connection of jupiter or venus so when the moon resides in the house of libra try to understand the strength of the moon based on its light energy you should definitely make the predictions based on the concept of subhatva and pabhatva the next planet that i'm going to explain is mars when mars resides in the house of libra mars aspects its own house that is a house of aries for the natives of aries ascendant when mars resides in the house of libra the mars gets subhatva because this is the house of venus when mars aspects its own house aries the house of aries gets strengthened i often say that whatever planet resides in the house of venus that the planet attains subhatva and you have to definitely take into account the strength of the venus the dispositor when the dispositor is strong that is when venus is exalted in the house of pisces or when venus is in another own house in taurus then it is good or when venus and mars is in conjunction in the house of libra then the person will work related to the fields of sports medicine authoritative positions uniform services 
fire service, etc. or even fields related to the fire. Therefore, when Mars resides in the house of Libra, it gets Subhatva and the Mars aspects its own house Aries and the Mars strengthens the house of Aries. Therefore, based on which ascendant the house of Libra is, the Mars will deliver Subhatva effects. When Mars resides in the house of Libra, it gets Subhatva. But it should not be in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu. Mars should not be in conjunction with the exalted Saturn here. It should not be in conjunction with Rahu as well. If you were born as the native of Jupiter team ascendant and if this house is the quadrant house, for example, if you are the native of Cancer ascendant, and when a malefic like Mars is in the quadrant house to the ascendant, which aspects the 10th house to the ascendant, residing in the house of Venus, then the major planetary period or dasha of Mars will be good. When a malefic planet is the lord of the trine house, it is not favorable. So for the native of the Cancer ascendant, when Mars being the house lord of the 5th house resides in the 12th house to the 5th house of the ascendant that is when it resides in the 12th house to the Scorpio it is good and Mars gets Subhatva here and strengthens its own house Aries which is the 10th house to the Cancer ascendant and therefore during the major planetary period of Mars the Mars will deliver benefits. When Mars resides in the house of Libra, it spoils the house but it gains Subhatva. You have to make predictions as a malefic planet residing in the house of Libra. Since the Mars aspects its own house Aries when it resides in the house of Libra, the house of Aries will be strengthened. Mars delivers its effects depending on which house the house of Aries is to the ascendant. Therefore, in brief, when Mars resides in the house of Libra, it is good because Mars gets Subhatva and the significance related to Mars will deliver benefits provided Mars is not in connection with the malefic. Now let me explain the next planet Mercury in the house of Libra. For Mercury, the house of Libra is such a friendly house. When Venus and Mercury exchange their houses mutually, that is the house of Virgo and the house of Libra, it is good. If Mercury is in conjunction with Venus in the house of Libra, it is an added benefit. Because this is such a friendly house to Mercury and Venus is a friendly planet. In any situation, when Mercury resides in the house of Libra, it is good. In addition to this, if it is in conjunction with the Venus that has got its own house status, it is an added benefit. When the Mercury and Venus is in Parivartan, say for example, if Venus is in the house of Virgo and Mercury is in the house of Libra, then the Mercury will get the exaltation status and the Venus will get its own house status because of Parivartan. The Sun, Venus and the Mercury travel together as their travel paths are not far away from each other. So when Mercury is in conjunction with Venus in the house of Libra, it is good. You have to make predictions based on which team the Ascendant belongs to, whether the Ascendant belongs to Jupiter team or whether the Ascendant belongs to Venus team. Therefore, you have to consider for whom you are going to make the predictions, that is for which ascendant you are going to make the predictions. For the native of Jupiter team ascendant, this conjunction is not good. For the native of Frikshik ascendant, that is Scorpio ascendant, the Mercury becomes the lord of the 8th house and it resides in the 12th house which is not good. It will not deliver good effects. For the native of Aries ascendant, Mercury becomes the lord of the 6th house and it is in the 7th house. 
Though this is Subhatva, the Lord of the sixth house should not be in the seventh house. If it happens, then it will spoil the status of the wife and the partners and anything related to the opposite gender, even it affects the friends. Therefore, when Mercury resides in the house of Libra, it is good, but you have to consider to which ascendant you are going to Mercury will deliver its effects. Since the Mercury is in conjunction with Venus, even for the native of Rikshik Ascendant or Aries Ascendant, Mercury will not deliver any worse effects. When Mercury is in conjunction with Venus in the house of Libra and gets the aspect of Jupiter, then it gets the highest Subhatva and those who excel in the field of software will have this planetary position in their natal chart. The house of Libra itself signifies the creator. It signifies the arts. The natives of Libra ascendant or Libra Rashi will be very creative. The native of Libra ascendant or Libra Rashi will be able to represent visually what they think. Therefore, when Mercury is in the house of Libra, it is good. It delivers great benefits. Well, this is question time. The question is, post which degree or which date the sun in the Libra house is not considered to be in debilitated status? Let me ask the question again. When sun resides in the house of Libra, which is the debilitation house for the sun, post which degree we consider that the sun is not in the debilitation status? Thank you. The link of the Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box and write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.